Dr. Ellis. Well, well, a lot of people <laughs> quote that mythological scripture that says that money is the root of all e evil. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Yeah. Okay. So money is a resource. It's neither good nor bad. And I think, uh, I think if we think of money or resources as belonging to God, then what we are then are stewards. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that that whatever we spend on, uh, we should think in terms of how does this glorify God? How does this uh, uh, advance, you know, the kingdom? Um, I think a lot of times um, we we see money or or resources as something for our own convenience, for our own, our own comfort. Now, there's nothing wrong with being comfortable. I mean, per se, but if I am doing that, let's say. Uh, at the expense of being generous, then that's a whole other that's a whole other issue. I think one of the highest um, uh, values I think for a Christian is to be generous. But it, but sometimes, <clears throat> though, generosity should not be uh, in, uh, done in such a way that it it uh, it uh, confirms uh, bad uh, values, bad behavior, that kind of thing. You know, it's like, like a lot of the welfare programs that we have in the, in, in the States right now, they actually fund uh, dysfunctional culture, you know? Uh, but so at, in my generosity, I'm going to be, I'm going to be discipling too. I'm going to be helping people understand how much better quality life can have when one follows the principles of the kingdom of God. Yeah. So this is a, a recent conviction of mine um, and a topic that's very dear to my heart just because I recently came uh, to the understanding of how poorly I was managing my finances. So um, a little bit of my story is that I was making, you know, um, uh, with my wife's, both our combined income, we were making six figures. Uh, and before that, when we first married, we were broke and we just assumed, man, we're not making progress because we're not making enough money, right? And then finally, we were able to start making money as, as with both of us working during the season. Uh, and at the end of it, we had nothing to show for it. Like mm -hmm. all of it was gone. Mm -hmm. And it began to really reveal to me that like the amount of money that I'm making is not the problem. The problem is me and my spending habits mm -hmm. and me not stewarding my money well. Mm -hmm. And then slowly uh, after that, I began to learn how to budget. Right, I, I began to learn what it looked like to really steward my finances. Uh, and keep track of my spending because a lot of people are afraid of budgeting, right? I, I, we like to call it yeah. cash flow planning, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But a lot of people are afraid of it because they feel like, ah, oh, if I budget, like, you know, uh, that means that I'm not going to be able to, you know, somebody else is telling me what to do with my money and all that. And and I get those fears. They're irrational, but I understand them. And I think it's also a misunderstanding of budgeting. But when you budget, you're actually intentionally telling your money what to do. So you're taking dominion over your money as opposed to letting your money take dominion over you. Because there are a lot of people who live with this pot in the sky attitude that they're spending their money just fine. Like, oh, I'm not. But if you begin to go back and actually track what they're spending their money on, you know, and, and, and could actually show them, hey, this is actually where your money's gone. Uh, some of them would blush. A lot of them, I think, would blush. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you budget, you can't lie to yourself. You can't make yourself believe that your money is doing one thing and reality is doing another, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to give accountability to that. I think it's a, I'd even just to take that picture and broader, like the uh, intentionality, if we're not careful, sinful hearts with money mm -hmm. will veer toward all kinds of Absolutely. unhealthy. I mean, we, we live in a culture that is not telling us how to bibli biblically how to handle our money. And so there's got to be an intentionality. It's it's that's saying, okay, how am I going to be intentional in my spending and my giving? What is what does that sacrificial giving look like in each of our lives? And to really intentionally ask those questions, informed by the word, uh, is has got to be a pattern. And all and and not so not to say that as as you pointed out, like it's not that money is either, or making money is bad. It's what that what we're doing with that money and what, the way. And to your point, like, and Jesus made it clear where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Like, our money is a reflection of where our hearts is. That's a frightening verse in our culture and even in the church. In our, if we're not ten, intentional, it, we've just got to be intentional about where we're going to put our hearts. And, and David, I would even say that it's not just a, a problem within the world, per se, but, like, it's a sleeping giant in the church, mm -hmm. I think. 
I mean, I meet Christians after Christian, and not just Christians, not just lay people, but pastors as well, who um, have no idea how to manage their money well. And I think that this is something that Christians need to talk about more. Uh, it's a conversation that needs to be had. We need to f- figure out how we can get resources and tools in the hands of our people, but also in the hands of our leaders as well. Because I think a part of the discipleship process should be how to manage your finances. Yeah. I think right now it's absolutely, not. absolutely. Yeah, it, 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 and a lot of it has to do with what, what what do I want the money to do for me? What do I want the money? Uh, like, for example, uh, okay, I'm driving an old beat-up car. I, I need a new car. Well, okay, there's a utilitarian reason for why I need a new car. It's something that's more uh, uh, reliable. But on the other hand, I want it with style. Why do I want it with style? Because I'm looking for something that, that style is going to make give, give to me, namely peace. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, the interesting thing is, is that God gives us the peace already. He gives us the contentment. So now I don't have to put the burden on the new car to do something for me that he can't do. See, that's, that's what happens. And yeah. I get the new car and it feels good for a couple of weeks. And after a while, okay, now what? Yeah. Then I get the next thing. Now what? You know, and, and so, but if, but if God gives me the thing that I'm really looking for, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, yeah. then I can appreciate the things that I have for what they can give me. And I don't expect them to give me what they can't give me. Yes. And, First Timothy uh, and, says, "Godliness with contentment is great gain." That kind of contentment, and or what does Paul say? With food and covering, I'll be content. Exactly. And so, it's the Christian life views money totally right. differently. Yeah. Right. If if we will be intentional right. to let the word and the gospel inform the way we think about money. Right. absolutely. And I'll, and I'll close on this: we we cannot be afraid to talk about money in the church just because it seems like we're going to make much money. I think if we talk about it in a way that's biblical, mm-hmm. I think if we talk away talk about it the way that Jesus talked about it, uh, I think that we'll not only help our people, uh, but we'll also um, be a light to the world uh, in how to steward our money well for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Amen.